name is Cynthia with Cynthia's Joyful Creations and today I am going to be your host on how to change colors within your project. To get started you'll need a hook. For this tutorial it does not matter which size hook you're using because it will all be determined on which size hook you're using for the project you're working on. And then you need two colors for today's tutorial. We're going to be using Kelly Green from Red Heart Super Saver and Mulberry from Red Heart Super Saver. For this tutorial, green will be known as color A and mulberry will be known as color B. So let's get started. Now I've gone ahead and worked a foundation chain of 21 chains, began the first row with a single crochet into the second chain from the hook and a single crochet all the way across the row, giving a total of 20 single crochets. And now we're ready to begin row two, where we will introduce our new color. To get started, we're going to chain one, and that's going to count as our turning chain. And then we're going to turn our work. We're going to work a single crochet into the very first four stitches. So one, two, three, and four. And now we're ready to introduce a new color. Now you can do your color change in however many stitch counts as you want, but for this tutorial we're going to, for the first half, do our, our color changes after every four single crochets. So we now have four single crochets of color A and we're ready to introduce color B. Now you can change your colors as you feel comfortable, but for this tutorial I'm going to show you how I do a color change. So I have created a slip knot with color B and I have color A still on my hook from where I made that fourth single crochet and I'm just going to slide that slip knot of color B right onto my hook in front of color A so I now have a loop of color A and a loop of color B. I am going to slip stitch that color B right into color A like that so that I only have color B on my hook. All right, and then I'm going to come grab the working yarn of color A and I'm going to lay it across my work vertically just like this and now I'm going to pull down on that working yarn vertically so that that loop now is nice and snug up against my work and it is actually part of that fourth single crochet that we just made. Then I'm going to grab the working yarn of color B and I'm going to pull it nice and snug across the work horizontally. Before I do that, I'm actually going to hold the working yarn of color A down with my index finger. So as I'm pulling, I've got a little bit of resistance and I'm going to do that so that color B is now nice and snug on my hook. Now I have this foundation um, tail from color B where I added it. You can either lay it across your work horizontally and work your stitches over it to secure it in. You can pull it to the back and to the side and weave it in later. For this tutorial, we're just going to work right over it. We're now going to give it some company by now bringing color A from our work vertically to horizontally across the work so that we're also working our stitches across it so that we can carry it with us until we're ready to use it again. Now we're ready to make new stitches using color B. So I'm going to go ahead in the next four stitches and I'm going to work a single crochet with the new color. I didn't mean to yarn over. And we're going to work right over that foundation tail of color B and the working yarn of color A. And that's two, now three, and four. 
So now we have four single crochets with the new color. I'm going to just slightly pull my loop up so I can pull my hook out so I can turn my work and it's not so bad but normally you can see the foundation tail maybe peeking in right here or peeking out I should say and you might see color A peeking out. We did a pretty good job with this one but I still want to make sure it's nice and tight so let me turn my work back over so I have the right side facing and I'm going to put my hook back onto my working yarn of color B and I'm going to start with the foundation tail of color B and I'm just going to give it a nice little tug so that I make sure that that yarn is all nice and tight in those stitches not too tight that I cause my stitches to bunch we don't want that then I'm going to go ahead and clip off anything remaining because I've secured it in a couple stitches and now I don't have to wor worry about that I can just continue working without having to worry about that foundation tail. So now all I have attached to my work are the colors that I'm working with, color A and color B. So now we need to switch from color B to color A. Before we do that, I'm going to offer up a piece of advice. When color changing, especially if you're going to be doing it in short little segments, I would recommend doing it on a flat surface so that you can lay your work down and that you can also maneuver the skeins of your colors over and under each other so that you keep them from getting tangled because changing colors up your yarn is going to get tangled and there's nothing more frustrating than having to stop working on your project to come over and untangle your yarn. So if you're using a flat surface you can take your skeins over and under each other as needed to keep them from getting tangled, especially if you're working with more than two colors. If you're working with multiple colors, that would really be beneficial because then you can just kind of hop and skip them over and under each other to keep them from getting tangled. So now we're ready to switch from color B back to color A. So to do that, I'm going to bring color A up under the working yarn of color B and I am going to yarn over and slip stitch that right through that loop of color B that was on my hook. So now I only have a loop of color A on my hook. I am now going to take the working yarn of color B and I'm going to pull it down across my yarn vertically, uh, excuse me, across my project vertically. So I'm actually bringing it towards me. I'm then going to take it and I'm going to give it a little bit of a tug to pull it down. So now that it's nice and tight into that fourth stitch that I made with it. And so now it's part of the work and it's no longer a loop. I'm then going to take the working yarn of A and I'm going to lay it across the pro top of the project horizontally and I'm going to pull it and you might have to take your index finger and hold the working yarn of color B onto the project so you have a little bit of resistance as you pull the working yarn of A down so that it is nice and snug on your hook. Then you're going to take the working yarn of color B and you're going to lay it now horizontally across your work. This way you can work your stitches over it, carrying it along until you need it for the next color change up. So now I'm going to pick up my piece and I'm going to go ahead and create the next four stitches using color A. So one, and again we're working single crochets, and two, three, and four. All right, I'm going to turn my work and when I do, now you can see where color B is peeking through those stitches from where I carried that yarn. That is not a look we want. We want it to be nice and crisp just like this one was. So we're going to turn our work back over to the right side 
as if we were going to continue making more stitches, but instead we're going to lay our work down. And I'm just going to take my hook and just slightly pull color A up just a little bit so that I can pull that hook and that color A away from the work. And now I'm going to grab the working yarn of color B that I was carrying along underneath the stitches and I'm going to give it a slight tug vertically across the top of my work tight enough that I'm pulling that yarn so it's no longer loose under those stitches but not too hard that it's going to cause my stitches to bunch and buckle. And then I'm just going to turn it over and see if I successfully pulled it through and it's not bunching out and I did. I'm going to turn my work back over and I'm going to take that working yarn of color B, excuse me, of let's put our hook back on our color A first and tighten it back down. Now we're going to take the working yarn of color A and pull it down across the work because we're done with it. We're ready to switch over to color B. And to do that, we're now going to grab color B, yarn over, and slip stitch it right into the loop of color A. So now color B is on our hook and color A is off and wrapped around the yarn of color B. We're going to go ahead and pull color A vertically so it's nice and snug down on the work like that. And then we're going to take color A, excuse me, color B and pull it horizontally holding color A so we've got some resistance and we can pull color B nice and tight on the hook. We're going to take color A and lay it across the work horizontally so that we can now work our color B stitches right over the top of it and carry it along. So let's go ahead and work the next four stitches of color B. And again, we're doing single crochets. So one, and of course you might be doing other stitches for your color change up, but for this tutorial, we're doing always single crochet. Two and three and four. All right, I'm gonna kind of pull that working yarn of color B up a little bit so I can move my hook away from my work. I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna take a look at how my stitches are. It's not too bad. I don't really have a lot um, bunching out except for right here. So let's turn our work back over with the right side facing as if we were gonna continue crocheting. And we're going to take color B and pull it nice and snug back onto the hook. So we want to make sure that we pull it nice and snug. So we're going to go ahead and pull it horizontally across the work until it's nice and snug. And we know that our stitches are nice and tight and clean, but not too tight that it would cause our stitches to bunch and buckle. Now we are finished with color B. So we are going to pull it down across the work vertically towards us and again you might have to move your skein so that your yarn is not getting tangled and you'll appreciate taking that time to do that especially if you're working with multiple colors that are more than two all right then you're going to take your working yarn of color A and you're going to yarn over and slip stitch it through the loop on your hook of color B. So now you only have color A on the hook. We're now going to take the working yarn of color B because we're no longer going to need it. And we want to pull it vertically towards us so that it's nice and tight to our work and part of that last single crochet that we made with it. We're going to hold it with our index finger so we can pull color A horizontally so we can get that loop nice and tight on the hook and ready to make our stitches. And before we start, we're going to then take the working yarn of color B and we are actually going to pull it. So we're going to have to use move our skeins so that they're not getting tangled. And in my case, I have to take it underneath the skein of color A because we want to pull it behind the work like this because we're coming to the end of the row and we're not going to use color B in this row anymore. So there's no need to carry it along only to have to carry it back. So we can actually leave it hanging here 
waiting for us. So we want to pull it to the back here so it's out of the way. And then we're simply going to just pick up our work and we're going to work those last four single crochets of the row. So one, two, three, and four. Make sure you go under both your loops on the end here. And that completes row two. And you can see your color change up. And your stitches are all nice and tight. If you turn it over, you have no stitches coming out and bunching out and showing. So now we're ready to begin row three. So we're going to chain one as our turning chain. We're going to turn our work. So now we're ready to start row three and we're going to work a single crochet using color A into the very first four stitches of this row. So one, two, three, and four. Now we're ready to change up to color B again. So we're going to lay our work down. We're going to take this working yarn of color A and we're going to bring it down across the work vertically so that it's out of the way. Now we're going to pick up the working yarn that's waiting for us of color B and we're going to wrap it around our hook and we're going to slip stitch it through that loop of color A that was on our hook so that now color B is the only color on our hook. Now it's very important that you pull color A down across your work vertically towards you before you do that loop, um, that slip stitch and change the color up because if you don't then color B is going to actually be covering and crossing over color A and it will be a part of this stitch which is the last, which is the fourth single crochet that you made of color A. And you want that stitch to be color A. You don't want part of color B in it. So now we're ready to tighten everything down. We need to tighten the loop of color A so it's now part of the stitch and not a loop. So we're going to take that working yarn of color A that's vertically coming towards us and pull it towards us so it's nice and tight to the project and now it's part of that four single crochet and it's no longer a loop. We're going to put our index finger on top of that working yarn of color A and hold it down on the project so that we can now take the working yarn of color B and pull it nice and tight so that loop on the hook is now snug and ready to go. We're then going to take that working yarn of color a, and we're going to now move it from the vertical position to the horizontal position across the top of our work so as we make our next couple stitches we're working over it and carrying it along with us. Just a reminder before you start making your stitches check out your your working yarns and see if you need to go over or under with your skeins to keep your colors from getting tangled. Once you've done that you can pick up your project and we're going to work on the next four single crochets with color B. So one, two, three, and four. And now we're going to lay our work down. And I'm just going to slightly pull the loop of color B up so I can move the hook away from my work to turn it over and see how my stitches look. And they look pretty good. I've only got one little section here where color A is peeking through. But even if it's not peeking through, you always want to do this so you make sure that your yarn is staying nice and snug so that your stitches are uniformed and looking crisp. So we're now going to take the working yarn of color A and remember this is the yarn that was laying up against the work we worked color B over it and we're going to give it a slug a snug tug horizontally across the work just to make sure that it is pulled nice and tight underneath all those stitches alright then we're going to grab the working yarn of color B 
and we're going to pull our loop back down to the work. And then we're going to take that working yarn and we're going to pull it down across the work towards us vertically so it's out of the way. And then we're going to pick up the working yarn of color A and we're going to slip stitch it through the loop of color B that was on the hook. So now that color A is the only loop on the hook. We're now going to grab that vertical working yarn of color B and pull it nice and tight vertically towards us so that loop now becomes part of that stitch. We're going to hold it with our index finger on the work so that we can grab the working yarn of color A and pull it horizontally so that now the loop on the hook is nice and tight and ready for the stitches. Then we're going to take the working yarn of color B and lay it across our work horizontally so that we can work over that yarn and carry it along until we need it again. Again, you want to take a moment and make sure that your yarn is not tangled and when it's not, then you can go ahead and start your stitches. So we're going to pick up our work and we're going to work four single crochets using color A, working right over that working yarn of color B. One, two, three, and four. And we're going to lay our work down. And we're going to grab the working yarn of color B that we carried along. And we're just going to give it a nice tug horizontally to make sure that it's nice and tight underneath those stitches of color A. And then we're going to grab color A. And we're going to take that working yarn and bring it down vertically across our work. And then we're going to take color B and we're going to slip stitch it through the loop of color A that's on our hook. So now that color B is the only yarn on our hook. We're going to come back and grab the working yarn of color A and pull it nice and tight vertically so that it makes that loop now part of the stitch. We're going to hold it with our finger. We're going to grab the working yarn of color B and pull it nice and tight horizontally so that hook it that yarn on the hook is nice and snug, ready to go. And then we're going to take the working yarn of color A and bring it across our work horizontally so we can work across it. And then we're going to take a minute to stop and make sure our yarn is not tangled. If it is, we're just going to go under or over whatever we need to do to keep it from being tangled. And now we're ready to work our stitches. So let's work four single crochets using color B. One, two, three, and four. And we're going to lay our work down. And we're going to grab the working yarn of color A. And we're going to give it a nice little tug to make sure that as we carried it, that that yarn is nice and secure under those stitches. And then we're going to grab the working yarn of color B and we're going to take it and bring it down across the work vertically towards us. Now, we're at the very end of our project here, or excuse me, our row, and we're not going to use color B on this row anymore. So actually, we don't have to get it ready to carry. So what we're going to do is go ahead and do our changeover by slip stitching color A into the loop of color B that's on the hook. So now color A is the only loop on the hook. And just like we have been, we're going to come back and grab color B and pull it down vertically towards us. So that loop now becomes a part of the stitch. But this time, instead of carrying, um, sorry about that, hit the camera. Instead of carrying color B with us, we can leave it waiting for us for when we need it for the next row. So we're going to come and bring it 
and pull it behind our work just like you would with the foundation tail out the way and then we're going to grab the working yarn of color A and pull it nice and snug so that loop is nice and tight on the hook and we're going to go ahead and work the last four single crochets of the row using color A. One, two, three, and four. And we now have finished, let me get both loops here. We have now finished the row. So we have three rows complete. Look how nice that looks. So now we're ready to start row four. So we're going to chain one, and that's going to count as our turning chain to heighten our, our row, and we're going to turn our work, and we're still only working with color A, so we're going to go ahead and work a single crochet into those very first four stitches. One, two, three, four, and now we're ready for a color change up. And then we would just continue across the row like we have for the last two rows. So we're going to stop here because what if you wanted the new color now to start here instead of matching up with this? What if you wanted to alternate it? Well, let's pull our hook out and we're going to pull those first four single crochets out and our turning chain. We're going to flip our work back over and we're going to pull those last four stitches of row three of color A out. Make sure you leave color A loop still here so you can slide it on your hook since that's the color you're going to be working with. And so if you're wanting color B to start row 4, then we're going to have to carry it. So just give it a tug horizontally because it should still be nice and snug down on your stitch there instead of a loop. Lay it across your work horizontally so you can now carry it all the way to the end. And so let's do that. Let's work four single crochets of color A right over that working yarn of color B. And by doing this, we now have both color yarns at the end of the row. And there's three and four. So now, before we change one, we've got to pull this yarn nice and tight, just like we would in the middle of the row, to make sure it's not showing through. And just like we would with another color change up, if we still had stitches on the row to do, since we're finished with A, we're going to now bring it down across the work vertically. Again, do whatever you have to do with your skeins to make sure they're not tangled by moving them under or over each other. You've got the working yarn of A going across the project towards you vertically. And since now we want B to start the row instead of A, we're going to chain one with the color B. And just like we had before, we're going to have to give color A a nice tug vertically so that that loop disappears into the stitch and is part of the stitch and not a loop anymore. Then give color B a nice tug so that stitch is now, that loop is now nice and tight on the hook. And then chain one. Pardon me, we already chained one. I'm so sorry. And then turn your work. 
Now, when you turn your work, you want to make sure that color A, the working yarn that you are not going to be creating stitches with, is underneath the working yarn of B, the color you are going to be making stitches with. So you want to come up underneath it right here. And you're going to pull it across your work so you're going to be making your stitches over it. So then pick up your working yarn and you're going to come right underneath that working yarn of color A and you're going to go right into the stitch and make your single crochet and that's one. You're going to go right into the next one, two, right into the next one, three, right into the next one and that's four and we're ready for another color change up and that's how that's done. So now you're alternating your colors from the way from the opposite of what you were doing on the previous two rows. So now we're done with color B. So we're going to bring it down across the work vertically. Move your yarn skein however you need to to keep it from being tangled. Then you're going to yarn over with color A slip stitch it right through the loop of color B so that color A is the only loop on the hook and you're going to pull color B nice and tight down into the stitch so it's no longer a loop. You're going to hold it with your index finger to the project so you can grab the working yarn of color A and pull it nice and tight so that it is nice and tight on the hook. Now you're going to bring color B and lay it across your work horizontally so you can work over it. Now the nice thing about this is now when you're working over it and it's running through the stitches of color A, it's going to match this color segment from the previous row. All right, so let's work our four single crochets with color A. One, two, three, and four. And that's cute. It looks like a little block now. All right. So we're ready to change up from color A to color B. So we are going to bring the working yarn of color A and we're going to pull it vertically down across the work towards us. We're going to take the working yarn of color B and we're going to give it a nice little pull horizontally to make sure that it is nice and tight under those last four stitches we made with color A. Then we're going to take it, yarn over, and slip stitch it through the loop on the hook of color A. So now color B is the only color on our hook. We're going to come grab that vertical working yarn of color A and we're going to pull it vertically towards us so it's now nice and snug to the work, part of the stitch, no longer a loop. We're going to hold it with our index finger to the work. We're going to grab the working yarn of color B, pull it horizontally so now that loop is nice and snug on the hook. We're now going to take the working yarn of color A and pull it across the top of the work horizontally so we can make our stitches with color B over it and carry it along. And now we're going to work four single crochets with color B. One, two, three, and four. All right, so we've now made our four single crochets with color B. We don't need that color anymore, so we're going to pull it down across our work vertically. We're going to move our skeins however we need to to make sure they're not tangled. 
and we're going to grab the working yarn of color A and we're going to pull it horizontally across the project to make sure that that yarn that was being carried along underneath the stitches of color B that we made is nice and tight. And then we're going to yarn over with it and pull it through the loop of color B that's on the hook. So now color A is the only color on the hook. We're going to come grab that working yarn of color B and pull it down towards us vertically so that we're pulling that stitch nice and tight into the work so it's no longer a loop, it's now part of the stitch. We're going to hold it with our finger to the work. We're going to grab the working yarn of color A and we're going to pull it nice and tight horizontally so that loop is now nice and tight on our hook. And then we're going to come and lay the working yarn of color B across our work so that we can now work across it and carry it along. And we're going to pick up color A and we're going to do four single crochets with color A. One, two, three, and four. We're going to lay our work down. And we're no longer needing color A. So we're going to pull it down across our work vertically out the way. We're going to move our skeins however we need to so that they are not tangled. We're then going to grab the working yarn of color B and we're going to pull it nice and snug horizontally so we can make sure that our yarn underneath the stitches of color A are nice and tight. We're then going to come and we're going to grab um, the working yarn of color B and we're going to pull it th through with a slip stitch through color A so that color B is the only loop on our hook. And we're now going to come grab the working yarn of color A and we're going to pull it vertically down towards us. Try to do this where you can see it. So it's no longer a loop, but it's now part of the stitch. And then we're going to hold it with our finger so we can pull the working yarn of color B nice and tight so that loop is now snug on the hook. Now we're going to pull the working yarn of color A and lay it horizontally so we can now work the four stitches of color B that we need to to finish off the row. And let's do that. One, two, three, and four. And we're going to lay our project down. We're going to grab the working yarn of color A and we're going to pull it horizontally so that the yarn that we carried along under the stitches of color B is nice and tight and snug. And then we're going to get ready to change up our color. So now we're at the end of the row and on the next row we want to come back with color B. So we're actually not going to do a color change up because we want it to match. So we're going to chain one with color B and then we're going to turn our work. And since we're not actually changing a color yet, we're just going to pull color A right up here at the top of the work so it's laying horizontally so we can work right over it as we make these next four stitches. So maintaining color B on our hook, we're going to do the next four stitches. So one, two, three, and four. And I can see color A peeking out from the front and when I turn it over, I can see it peeking out from the back. So just like we have been, we're going to lay our work down. We're going to take the working yarn of color A and we're going to pull it horizontally across the work so we can secure that yarn in nice and snug. And now we're done with color B. So we're going to bring it 
down across our work. Move your skeins if you have to so your yarn's not tangled. Then take the working yarn of color A and slip stitch it into color B. So color A is the only loop on your hook. And you're going to take the working yarn of color B and you're going to pull it nice and snug vertically so that loop now becomes part of the stitch. You're going to hold it with your finger and you're getting a little bit more of your project made so you've got a little bit more to hold down and you've got a little bit more to hang on so it's going to make it a little bit easier. We're going to grab the working yarn of A and we're going to pull it across horizontally so it makes that stitch nice and tight to the hook. All right, so we're going to work this row a little bit faster since we've done it a couple times now. And so we're ready to start using our green. So we're going to bring the working yarn of color B along the top of our project horizontally so we can work over it. And we're going to make those four stitches with color A. So one, two, three, and four. We're going to lay our work down. We are done with color A, so we're going to bring it down across our work vertically. We're going to then take the working yarn of color B and pull it nice and tight underneath those stitches. We're then going to take it and slip stitch it into the hook, the color A that's on the hook. So now color B is the only color on the hook. We're now going to take the working yarn of color A pull it down nice and tight so that loop is now part of the stitch. We're going to hold it, pull color B nice and tight horizontally so it's now nice and tight on the hook, bring color A back across the work horizontally, and we're going to pick up making our four single crochets using color B. So one, two, three, and four and we are done with color B. So we're going to pull it vertically down across our work. We're going to grab color A. We're going to pull it horizontally to secure those stitches underneath that we carried through underneath color um, B. We're then going to slip stitch into the loop on the hook. So now we've pulled it through color B and now we only have color A on the hook. We're going to grab color B. We're going to pull it nice and snug vertically so it's now part of the work and not a loop. We're going to hold it, pull the working loop yarn of color A horizontally so it's now nice and snug on the hook. We're going to bring color B back across the top of the work horizontally so we can work over it carrying it along. And we're going to work our four stitches with color A. And one, two, three, and four. We're going to put our work down and we're done for the moment with color A and I'm going to switch up my skeins here a minute so my yarn is not tangled. All right. We are finished with color A, so we're going to bring it down across the work vertically. We're going to take color B and we're going to pull it horizontally so that it's nice and snug underneath the stitches of color A. And we're going to then yarn over and slip stitch it right through the loop of color A that's on the hook. So now color B is the only color on the hook. We're going to take the working yarn of color A and pull it nice and tight down to the work. Let's see if I can do it this way. Yeah, that way you can see it. So now it's no longer a loop, but it is part of that stitch. We're going to take the working yarn of color B and we're going to pull it nice and snug horizontally so that loop is now nice and tight on the hook and it's ready to go. So we're going to stop here for a minute. So depending on what you're going to do next, will determine if you are going to take the working yarn of color A and lay it horizontally across 
those last four stitches or if you're going to pull it to the back out of the way and let it wait for you. Because I'm going to show you a couple other things, we're going to lay it across the work horizontally and carry it all the way to the end. So when we complete these last four stitches with color B, both of our working yarns will be waiting for us at the end of the row. So let's go ahead and work these last four stitches of color B. One, two, three, and four. And so now we have both of our working yarns waiting for us at the end of the row. Well, just like we had before, before we can go on, we need to secure everything down. So grab the working yarn of color A and pull it nice and tight underneath those stitches. All right. Now, depending on how you want your pattern to go next, will determine if you bring color B that you just used down across the work vertically and you would only do that if you're done with that and you're going to switch up to the next color. But we're not going to. Okay? We're going to use it one more time. So color A is still not being used. So therefore we want to pull it down vertically. And we're going to chain one with color B and then we're going to turn our work. Okay? All right. And when we do, we're going to lay color A across our work horizontally so we can work over it. Now, we're gonna stop here again because before I go on to the next part, I'm gonna give you some other options. Let's say that you are not going to be changing your colors up as quickly as we did in this pattern. Let's say you're going to do it every 10 or every 20 stitches. An option that you have is you can have a separate skein for that color for each time you're going to change up and you don't have to carry it since it's going to be such a larger gap in between color changes. But if you do that, it's again real important that you consider working your project on a flat surface so you can continue moving your skeins over and under each other to keep them from getting tangled up. Because the more skeins or the more colors you use, you could have a really quick hot mess. And so what you would also consider if you don't want to have all those different skeins is you can create small balls out of one skein and have that. And then if a color runs out before the project is over, then you can just attach the new color as you would any other time. So with that being said, we're now going to look at what if you're changing colors quicker than four stitches. So let's do it as if we were changing and alternating it with every other stitch. So I'm going to start with color B. That's what's on my hook. Okay. And so I'm going to go right into this first stitch with color B and make my single crochet. And of course I've got color A running across horizontally and I'm carrying it along with that stitch. So now I want to change my color. I no longer need color B. So just like we had before, I'm going to bring it down across my work vertically. I'm then going to grab my A and I'm going to pull it horizontally to make sure that one little stitch I have nothing bulging out. I'm going to go ahead and yarn over and slip stitch it into color B. So now color A is the only color on my hook. Just like I have before, I'm going to grab color B and I'm going to pull it down nice and snug so it's now part of the work and no longer a loop. I'm going to hold it on my work. I'm going to grab color A and pull it horizontally so now it's nice and snug on my hook. And I'm now going to bring color B and lay it across my work horizontally and I'm now ready for color A. So now I'm going to pick up my work and I'm going to work my color A stitch. Alright, I'm ready to switch again. 
I no longer need color A, so I'm gonna bring it down across my work vertically. I'm gonna move my skeins as I need to so that they're not getting tangled. I'm then gonna grab the working yarn of color B and I'm gonna give it a little tug so that where it's worked under that stitch of A, it's nice and snug. And I'm gonna go ahead and yarn over, slip stitch it through that color A loop that was on the hook. So now color B is my only color on the hook. I'm gonna grab the working yarn of color A and I'm gonna give it a nice little tug so it's now pulling down into the work and there's no longer a loop. I'm gonna hold it and I'm gonna pull color B horizontally so now it's nice and tight on my hook. I'm then gonna move color A to the top of my work horizontally so I can work over it. And I'm now gonna create my next stitch with color B. And then I'm gonna lay my work down and I'm ready to switch up. I no longer need B, so I'm gonna pull it down over my work vertically. I'm gonna grab color A. I'm gonna pull it horizontally so underneath that one stitch, it's nice and secure and snug. I'm gonna yarn over and slip stitch it through the loop of color B that was on my hook. So now color A is the only color on my hook. I'm gonna pull the yarn of color B down nice and snug so now it's no longer a loop but it's part of the stitch. I'm gonna hold it. I'm gonna pull the working yarn of color A horizontally so now that loop is nice and snug on my hook. I'm gonna bring color B up to the top of my work and lay it across there horizontally so I can work over it. And I'm gonna go ahead and work a stitch with color A into the very next stitch. And I'm gonna repeat this process. So let's do it some more together, okay? All right, we're done with A, so bring it down across the work vertically. Pick up the working yarn of B, pull it nice and snug under A. Go ahead and yarn over and slip stitch it through that loop of A that was on the hook. So now that B is the only one on the hook, take the working yarn of A and pull it down towards you vertically so it's no longer a loop, it's now part of the work. Hold it, grab the working yarn of B and pull it across horizontally so now that loop is nice and snug on the hook. Bring A to the top of the work and lay it across it horizontally so you can work over it and go ahead and make that stitch with color B. And let's just do a couple of these together. And I'm just gonna work the stitches since we've kind of got the hang of it so you can see what's happening with changing up those colors. And so there I have worked up a couple more and I'm just gonna pull this out so you can kind of see how those color changes are happening. So you can do it as often as you need to. You can spread it out, but I've given you two different techniques of how you can do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish working up across this row and then I'll come back and join you when we have completed this row of alternating it um, every other stitch. So I finished working across this row, alternating every other stitch with the colors. And so you can now see how you can work up in the project, changing colors within your work, 
whether it's every few stitches, every other stitch, a multiple of stitches, and you can use the same concept regardless of how many colors you're using. Well, I hope this tutorial has been helpful and I hope that you have great success and switching up your colors, creating all kinds of wonderful and fabulous patterns with different colors. Well, again, this is Cynthia with Cynthia's Joyful Creations, and I have been your host today, and I wish you the best with all of your many color change-ups. Mm -hmm.